All right. So <clears throat> the social effects of the Great Depression. So we went over the causes of it and what started it. So next up are the social effects. So like, what happened to people? You know, like, uh, you know, 80 years from now, people will study this pandemic and we'll talk, they'll talk about the lockdown and they'll probably talk about the political infighting that went on with it and the mask wearing and not wearing mask wearing and the results of it and all kinds of stuff, right? Which we don't even totally know yet, right? But we'll definitely talk about those things. But what you don't lose, what you don't get, what you lose from history books sometimes is like what, what happened to everyday people? You know, you and I remember what went on. Like you think back and there's some goofy stuff that went on, you know, that, that we all did. Like I remember washing my groceries for heaven's sakes. Like what the heck did I do that for? But we saw it on TV. Like that was a good idea. So we literally took a disinfectant and we wiped down everything when it came into our house. We did that twice. And then after the second time we were like, yeah, we're not doing that anymore because we figured out that that probably wasn't how it was going to be caused. But that's a social effect, right? That's, a, that's what people do. Uh, and there'll be so there are continuing social effects that some of you are feeling, right? You've had to be quarantined. Your parents may have lost their jobs, right? There, there's all kinds of different things that, that have happened because of what's going on now. But what was it like during the Great Depression, right? So what were the social effects? So I'll start with a couple of pictures, right? You'll get the terms for this in just a minute. But this is what they called a Hooverville, right? Remember, Hoover was the president and man, people did not like him once this went south. Okay, so as soon as the economy goes bad, the president gets blamed. I mean, that's just the way it is. If, if a baseball team or a football team doesn't play well, you can have the greatest coach in the world, but if the players stink and they lose, it's still the coach's fault. I mean, the coach is going to be the one at the end of the day who's, who gets blamed, right? So Hoover's going to catch the blame. These are Hoover Vills. These are what they called Hoover blankets. Okay. Weird. Right. And this is a Hoover flag. Okay, showing your patriotism, right? Like Hoover, you have an empty pocket because you don't have any money because of him, even though it really wasn't his fault. Uh, okay, so a symbol of hope during the Great Depression was uh, the Great, uh, excuse me, the Empire State Building, what they're working on in New York City. Um, the the social effects then, right? Farm distress. People lost farms like crazy. They literally just walked off the farms, okay, in some places. Food prices dropped, even though everybody had to have food there wasn't any money out there for people to purchase the food. Okay. Farmers actually poured out milk and they burnt crops, right? Now they kept enough for themselves, right? Of course, but they, they did this because there was two member. One of the causes of this is that the farmers produced too much stuff and there wasn't enough demand for all the things that they produced. So solution, burn the crops, pour the milk out. Okay. So that, that, that would mean the prices would go up. Okay, that seems crazy, but if there's too much supply, not enough demand, this is a response. All right, Hooverisms, right? Here's all the stuff I told you earlier with the picture. Shanty towns or Hoovervilles. Okay, that's basically where homeless people live. Uh, empty pockets were Hoover flags. Homeless kids in the West were known as Hoover tourists. You'll see some of them in a minute. Newspapers were Hoover blankets. Okay, because people had to stay outside and they used newspapers to cover up with because they didn't have anything else. Uh, here's a picture of a Hooverville. This is actually kind of a nice one in the city. You can see it's kind of in an urban area where these people have taken makeshift things, any pieces of wood or whatever they could get a hold of and built a little shack to live in. I mean, this is the kind of stuff you, I see in my geography class today. Like when we studied like the slums of Calcutta in India, like this is this is it. Like this is what it looks like. And this is how they live their everyday life. This is what we were living. Some people were living like during the Great Depression. All right, where do you get your food, right? People would go to the soup kitchens. They would stand in line to get bread, okay? And these, these are dads, right? These are people that had jobs and were, you know, representatives of their family. And they were, the, they were the ones supposed to be bringing this home. And now they don't have a job anymore. So parents that normally provide for kids would have to go to the soup kitchen. They'd have to go to the bread lines to get food to bring home uh, for their family. So this is a picture um, by that famous photojournalist that took the, the migrant mother picture that you looked at last week. Okay. And he just happened to have this one guy turned around, you know, and he's got his cup in his hand and boy, it's a great picture. It's called angel on a bread line. Okay. And that photojournalist was Dorothea Lang. Okay. She was from San Francisco, not six flags. She was from San Francisco. She took the migrant mother picture. This one is angel on the bread, bread line. She also inspired the book, the grapes of wrath. Okay, so she was uh, 
she was very influential. She used her job with the government uh, to really do a lot of good and bring awareness to America through her pictures. Uh, okay, the family uh, actually became closer. So it's kind of a good thing, right? They didn't have very much money, so they stayed home and they did things together. And that's exactly what my family did during the lockdown. I mean, we played cards every night. We played basketball all the time. Um, and it brought us together, right? So the board game Monopoly, if you think about what Monopoly is about, it's about getting rich, who can make the most money. And that was a dream in 1933 and board games were popular. And so Monopoly was a hit in 1933. So um, the idea of board games and the family becoming closer is, is a social effect. It's a good one. It's a positive. Uh, it also st stains society, right? People were unhealthy. There was a poor diet. There was hardly enough food for people to eat. Uh, my dad talked about his uh, his mom, my grandma. Uh, she would this. So this would be, you know, the gangster guy that got murdered. This would be his son and his wife. They would get a hold of some kind of bird. Right. It could be like a turkey leg or it could be a chicken uh, and they would cook it like on a Sunday and then they would keep it cool and then they would eat it. Right. And then, but all the meat's gone by Tuesday, if not on Sunday, but then they would just put more water into the pot and then they would eat soup and, and that would be their meals. That's like all they would eat. So everything they ate was very watered down, which is why I told you the story during uh, the lesson about my great grandpa, that my dad was so poor that he'd get sick when he'd go to his uncle Bernie's, who's the guy that continued in the gangster life. Uh, he'd get sick eating scrambled eggs because that was just so new, rich in nutrients. Mm -hmm. That's hard for us to even imagine today. I hope nobody has anything uh, in their life that they're that sick from eating food because they're not, they don't normally get enough um, nutrients, right? Our government today does a good job of making sure that everybody gets something, okay? And they don't live in the extreme kind of poverty that my dad did. Um, discrimination increases, that's another problem. Um, there were such a limited amount of jobs. It comes to that old thing about, you know, not wanting the immigrants because they're going to take jobs. Well, it also strained race relations even more than they were already strained. Uh, and black people were pushed out of jobs, um, that they could have had before, uh, families moved in with relatives. Um, so again, it's kind of a good thing to bring the families together, but, um, my aunt Lou, if you remember that Lula from that end of that article, her family couldn't afford, to keep going. And so she literally left her kids at my dad's house. And remember, my dad lived in a shack with a dirt floor. That's how poor they were, that somebody else thought they were rich. They came to live with them. And so my grandma raised two other kids that weren't her own kids, um, which is just amazing to me. And, you know, one of them just died. One of those kids just died within the last six months. Um, so families were very strained, right? Women couldn't work. Men were hired first. If a woman went to a factory to try to get some kind of job, she's going to be turned away because the factory owners are going to look at the head of the families first and try to hire them. You know, in some ways that, that's kind of fair, but in other ways that's not fair at all, right? Like what if the, what if the husband's dead? What if you're by yourself, like the migrant mother? Uh, you know, that becomes an issue. And so it was a difficult time. Um, and as usually what happens during a difficult times, minorities uh, are, are the ones that get pushed aside even further and struggle a little bit more. Um, OK, so effects on men. It was very psychological. Uh, some men wandered the streets in search of a job. Uh, hobos, they were homeless men that just wandered all over the country. The high school kids like, you know, we complain, you know, we got to go remote e-learning day or, you know, this sucks. Go and do an e-learning at all, which is not great. But uh these guys had nothing to do. These high school kids are 16, 17, 18 years old. They got nothing. Their parents can't feed them anymore. So they kind of got to fend for themselves, right? So the men and the boys, this becomes a serious problem. Uh, this is one of my regrets. I was only 10 when my grandpa that lived through this died. And my other grandpa died way before this, way before I was even born. Um, but I would have loved to ask him this question. Like, what was it like for you? You know, because he was a bartender. Well, heck, nobody was going to the bar. I'm sure he wasn't making any money. So that had to be real difficult to see his family live that way. Uh, okay, so effect on women. Women did all kinds of things. And as women tend to do, they get very resourceful. Um, they canned food. So they would get some peaches during the summertime, maybe. And then they would can them and keep them throughout the winter. They would do that with all kinds of fruits. Uh, and this is part of the reason why sometimes the older generation of women do these things. 
the, the, like my mom still does strawberries. She's 85 uh, because that's what her mom did. So some people sewed clothes. My mom just told me a story the other day that um, we had a neighbor that used to sew our socks when we were little kids in like the sixties and seventies. Like my brother's not necessarily me, but like their, their socks would get holes in them and she would take a light bulb and put that light bulb in the sock and then knit the socks back together and give them to my mom, give them back to my mom because we had so many kids, you know, that this lady felt like we needed to do that. And even in the sixties and seventies, my mom was like, uh, we'll just go buy some more socks, you know, but this lady insisted on that. The reason why that neighbor, okay, Mrs. Grogan, the reason why she insisted on that is because in her mindset, that's what happened during the great depression. And that's when she was of that age to do things like that. So, uh, it was also tough for women to get a job, like I explained earlier, because the men were always hired first because they were seen as the head of the household in those days. Uh, on kids, schools closed, right? In many parts of the country, you guys might be like, yeah, that'd be awesome. We wouldn't have to do this stuff. Yeah, but then what do you do? Then you, you're not educated. And when it comes time to get a job, like, you know, then what? Even my dad, who was born in the middle of this, he graduated, well, he was supposed to graduate from high school in 1953. But after his junior year of high school, he got a job. And my grandpa told him, you're not going back to school. There's no reason for you to graduate from high school because you were making too much money because my grandpa lived through this Great Depression. I never thought about that, what I just told you, until this pandemic happened because I'm living through this like you are. So we see the reactions of this. We're going to react differently as time goes on towards the next pandemic. Well, we just will because we've lived through one. Okay. The same thing happened as a result of the Great Depression. Okay, so the effects on kids were big. Even the effects on the next generation of kids were big because the schools were closed. Um, malnutrition and diet related diseases, like I explained to you about my dad. Uh, the wild boys rode the trains, okay? Um, 24,000 of them were killed and 27,000 were injured on railroad property. Now, I had a problem with this video a minute ago, but we're going to try it. because it's crazy. But basically these wild boys, they had no hope. Like there was nothing for them to do. Okay. You guys get bored after like 30 minutes without your phone in your hand. Okay. So these guys were, they were days and days and weeks and weeks where they had no job. They had no school. They didn't have food. They had nothing to do. Now, of course it doesn't work. They had nothing to do. So their answer was, we're literally going to go on a freight train, you know, that like runs by Lebanon Avenue up here. They, as that train was going by, they would just jump onto the side of the train and they would ride that train as far west as they could go. And then they'd hop off. There were towns in the West where people literally stood by the trains, by the train tracks with baseball bats because they didn't want those kids getting off and coming into their town and taking away their jobs. I mean, that's crazy. And it's unbelievably dangerous, which is why almost 25,000 people were killed trying to do this. Okay. Unbelievable. This is in America. Okay. This is in the United States. It's just amazing. Uh, okay. So psychological effect. Again, this is like my dad not going to graduate from high school because my grandpa told him not to. My grandma on the story from the, the last unit about the cold, hard cash in the freezer. Okay. These people saved all their money. They didn't trust the banks. They didn't want to put it in there. Okay. They lived through a terrible time and they did not want to live through it again. So that had a psychological effect on them. And guys, and it doesn't have to be negative, but there's and if this pandemic, like there'll be an effect going forward. Okay. Like years and years and years later, you're going to do things and I'm going to do things differently because of what happened with this. Maybe it's going to be a face mask. Maybe. Okay. Maybe it's going to be not wearing a face mask. Maybe it's going to be, you know, having a different setup for a pandemic team. I, I hope the next time that there's a vaccination that we have a better rollout. I mean, there's just so many things that are happening now that we're learning lessons from, and that has an effect on what happens in the future. So stories of survival, people did whatever they had to do to survive. Uh, they ate food out of dumpsters. They survived on food rations. Okay. They, they just literally, it was survival of the fittest for a while. And for people that were already down and out, okay, like minorities, like sharecroppers in the South, like people that in extreme poverty, like my family, like you just did whatever, okay? The odd thing is one of the good things that comes out of this is that people learn the value of work, okay? And they know that having a job is is special 
And so working and taking that money and bringing it home and providing for yourself and for your family is a big deal. And so people want that job. Okay. And they're going to work really hard coming out of it. Okay. Also, a lot of the kids, if you were 10 years old when this started, or you were even five years old when this started, by the time World War One, or excuse me, World War Two rolls around, you're up. So they, they live through this. Okay. And then when it comes time to fight, they go fight and they fight hard and they have worked their butts off. They've survived. They're survivors. And now they're going to go fight the Nazis. And let me tell you, they were prepared to fight the Nazis because these these Americans coming into that draft and coming you know into the military were some tough tough people. Okay, uh, positives developments of the Great Depression and the negatives of the Great Depression. Okay, I want you to think about that. We'll talk about that when we get to the uh, to the Ed puzzle. Uh, of course, there's a migrant mother, and uh, you guys did that last week. So we will stop there on the social effects of the Great Depression.